Hey, it's Joe Ferrer with Geek Toolkit, and today I'm gonna to talk about a recap of some of my stuff from CES that I thought was interesting. I'm not gonna do any fancy editing, we're just gonna get into it. This first thing here was an application and hardware device for a phone to make it a, an oscilloscope. It's called Minis, and here's the webpage for it. This is the packaging, you see it's $120, two channel oscilloscope. We'll get you some of the stats down here, two megahertz. And basically you put an oscilloscope in your pocket and have it with you at all times. I thought that was cool for uh, a geek tool. Um, there it is again, minis, and it just had a really cool looking app. Um, great for just getting some, some decent project uh, feedback and debugging done. Here, this one, let's see, I'm gonna set this on repeat because you're gonna wanna see this more than once. This is two products. This is a smart speed cube and also a, uh, a robot that, that completes it. Now you're gonna hear the word smart a lot. It's just something at CES. Um, one of these other videos, I'll talk about a smart potato and uh, talk about the whole smart culture of CES. But this cube here has an app and you can see that on the phone here, it knows what colors are where on the cube. And so what that allows it to do is a couple things. One is it allows it to talk to the robot, which is a separate product that will complete the cube. But also, and more importantly, it allows you to learn how to do the algorithms to complete a cube. This is for people that want to compete in speed cubing. So the cube is a very high quality cube, very, very fast, that very easy to turn. As you can see, the robot's doing it quite quickly. But also, it can uh, the app will tell you, you know, turn it this way and give you hints and, and training on the algorithms. I just thought that was really cool. I'd never seen a smart Rubik's cube before. And especially, uh, I'd seen the robots on YouTube solve them, but to see it in person was quite a thing. So, GameCube, and that's available right now on Amazon from what I understand, $70 for the cube, and I believe $70 for the robot separately. This is a company out of uh, Korea, Hanseo University, I should say, it's a university student. Um, he's showing off his smart cat wheel. It uses an LED light to keep the cat motivated to run forward. I just thought that was a really neat innovation. It also shows CES really has a ton of stuff. You know, I've seen a lot of robots, a lot of drones, a lot of TVs out of CES, but there is a lot of other things going on. This right here is from Hi-Core. the Hi-Core T1. This is a uh, bike wheel that converts a bike that's a pedal bike to a electric to an electric bike. So uh, let's see. Here's some you know different designs that they have here, different colors and stuff. But this wheel goes on the back of the bike like this here and there is no um other modification to the bike no wiring no battery all the everything is in the wheel the battery and everything and what's cool about that is is when you're pedaling it's a pedal assist so that's how it knows how fast to go it goes up to a top speed of let's say here's all the stats so 20 miles an hour charges in three hours uh 31 mile range and the other thing is it's user serviceable so that if you got to a point where your battery died, you could pull another battery out of your backpack and plug it in without having to uh, have a bunch of tools that are ridiculous or having to, you know, it's a user serviceable replaceable battery, which is one of their innovations. The other thing about this wheel is the motors and all that were made so that they were also easily swappable out and they're inexpensive. So if you did have a motor break on this, it's something that you can inexpensively replace. And I thought that was a really cool uh, design. I believe the wheels are about twelve hundred dollars. Um, you know, it's a, it's one of those things where they're sold through dealers, but that was about the price range. It is spendy, but if you look at an electric bike, uh, they're quite spendy too. And the fact that you get to keep your existing bike, I thought was neat. To stop, you just use whatever regular system you have for braking, and they support a disc and uh, caliper brakes on this. This is CircuitJet. Uh, CircuitJet prints circuit boards, uh, which I thought was really cool. Let me see if I can find their, their video here. Yeah, so this shows, uh, this this gentleman here is in, uh, I believe, Eagle CAD, and he's going to basically go down to print, and this printer will spit out a circuit board for him. Now the board is a thick uh, piece of plastic that you feed into here, and then you can see it's just gonna lay down conductive ink. It doesn't do any milling of the board, so when you see the final board shapes, those are milled afterwards, but having the conductive ink and having prototype that quick is very, very cool. I believe the price point on this was $1,500. So that is uh, from Electron Inks, and it's called Circuit Jet. These guys, uh, I saw these tanks and got excited. I ran over to talk to them, and uh, it was hilarious. 
they are working on a franchise in Europe for a, basically a tank arena, and it's amazing. The tanks are going to be metal, and they're going to know where they're getting hit. So you can have things. They're actually going to shoot pellets at each other in the arena. Each tank uses two people to control it. So these, both these controllers are going to one tank. You can see there's a little camera on the front of this tank here for the driver. There's another one for the turret, and that's totally independently controlled. So you can have some really cool tank battles in these arenas. And as they're shooting each other, because they're taking damage, or they know where they're getting hit and they're simulating damage, they can do things like stopping the treads or, or whatever and knowing where the armor is. So... Um, Iron Bull tanks, they're going to start out in Europe and hopefully make it to the U.S. I would love to do this one day, so I'm going to have to look them up in a couple years, see where they're at. Uh, these are actually something that are out now. These are inkjet printers that fit in your hand, and I just thought it was magical when I saw this one in action. It does colors, it does photos. What I saw at CS was a number of these. Um, they were doing things like printing on t-shirts and customizing t-shirts immediately. They were printing out logos. The other thing they were doing is they were printing on um, skin. So they had like a tattoo one of these that was doing instant tattoos. And I thought that was really, really cool. Project Argon is bringing legal emulation uh, to Android. They are developing their own emulator from the ground up. Their first two platforms that they're going to work on are Vectrex and Lynx, the uh, Atari handheld. And uh, they're hoping to expand to other things like PCs, other platforms, and other consoles and games. Now, they're going to be licensing the ROMs. They're building their emulator to the ground up uh, just to try to get do everything right. The company name is Mark slash space, so Mark space, which I believe is a reference to, to uh, Morse code, which is all very retro geeky. And these guys are legit. I had a really cool conversation with them about the Atari 800 and the four, uh, four ports on the front of it, which in my opinion is still the only way to play mule uh, legitimately. And uh, they were just right in there with it. So, so these guys are awesome. They're legit. And project Argon, there's a page on Facebook where they're actively updating it right now. And I'm just really would love uh, for this to succeed and see more ROMs get licensed legally out there. Smarty Kit. Uh, Smarty Kit was awesome. This guy wanted people to be able to build their own Apple One computer to learn computing. So his documentation, I'm going to go to his website actually. His documentation uh, sh shows these chips here. and you know, Or I'm sorry, the packaging is beautiful, shows the chips. His documentation talks about like ROM and RAM and how it's laid out and memory addresses. So when you build this, you're building a legit Apple One computer that will run the, uh, I believe it's called the console operating system from Woz. And it, it actually, this is the product. This is what you're building. These, these put together, let's see, this is the thing that the kit that you built. But at the end of this, this is the uh, PS2 port for your keyboard, and this is actually the RCA out for the monitor. So that's the only thing, if you get this kit, you saw it was $99. Um, you'll build your own computer, but you're gonna want something uh, that will take this RCA out to, to show what you're building, or you know, show your output, your monitor. Um, he labeled the, the chips, you know, you see there's ROM, RAM, CPU, and his documentation was just really well done. So that's called Smarty Kit, building an Apple One computer. A lot of articles jumped all over this, so there's a lot of info out there about it. Oh, yes. Uh, so I joked with these this group. Uh, this is Square Off. I said, basically, you didn't bring any tech to CES. You just brought a ghost. Um, this is one of those smart... Uh, one of those chessboards where the pieces move on their own, and I just thought that was really cool. Um, now, what's neat about this is this is a four or $500. This is a really nice chessboard, but they have an Indiegogo right now where they have a, let's see, there it is, $139 uh, Indiegogo price. And you see they have a ton of customers. Uh, sometimes Indiegogo, I'm a little bit sketch on things unless the company is established, but these guys are. And uh, they have the Square Off Neo and Square Off Swap. Their other one, their, their um, crowdfunding, is a multi-game system. So you've got checkers, um, chess. They're going to have a couple of different games here. And then in the future, they're hoping to release other boards and even expand it further. So I would check out their Indiegogo, their uh, search for Square Off or their site will get you here. Very, very cool. And let me just show you that again because it is, um, oop, there we go. I just, I don't know, something about the chess pieces. That, that bishop was just taken and then the knight's going to move to the square where he took it. Uh, there he goes. He's going around the other pieces and 
got got to a square. I thought that was really cool. This is a tech that I just thought was a fascinating direction for technology. Uh, of course, you know, you have Apple come out with um, the earbuds that, that fit in your ear that are um, uh, well done. They've got a great microphone on them. And now you've, you're adding compute to it so that you have translation earbuds. And whether this company pulls it off or not, what I typically find at CES is when, once you see something like this, this will end up becoming a trend in the future. This will be a thing that's out there. And I love the idea of bringing people together and breaking the language barrier through tech. Um, just a really fascinating thing. It would be great for my travels if I could use earbuds like that. So, uh, oh yes, virtual reality. Uh, virtual reality locomotion is a very hard problem to solve and there are a number of very expensive solutions. I purchased one of these years ago uh, called the Virtuix Omni back when they were starting out and they were promising locomotion. Well, VR went a different way. And so did Virtuix Omni. They went commercial and they're about $5,000 and you can't really get one for your home. And even if you do, they were like twice the size of a arcade cabinet and they take a ton of time to get in. I mean, I, I, I have a love hate with the one I have, but basically supports drop for it. And the, at the end of the day, I did like locomotion inside of games. So here's the thing about this video. And I'm gonna loop this one because I wanna talk about this for a sec. It looks ridiculous. I know it looks ridiculous. He, the product is actually on his feet, strapped to his feet, and as he's moving, the wheels are, are moving, and that's making him go. And he's uh, he's playing, I believe, a version of Doom, if I, if I recall right. Let me see. I have the... Um, I might even have the product. Let's see. Cyber Shoes. Here we go. This is what the product looks like. It's actually these shoes here. That's all it is. The chair in this is just basically any spinning chair and then some carpet to give you some traction. And these things are about $400. Now here's here's why I'm excited about them. I tried them on and I played a bit of the game and I was having the time of my life. I, I wasn't sure if I would enjoy it. Like I said, I have a Virtuix Omni, I've used that. This was so much better. And at the end of the day, I could take them off my feet and throw them under my bed and it would be out of the way, unlike the Omni. So. Very, very cool t uh, technology. They're called Cyber Shoes. They worked really well, really well. And uh, I did a lot of backpedaling because the game terrified me in VR. Uh, I kept having monsters in my face. I'd backpedal and it worked very intuitively. It only took me, I would say, less than uh, a minute and a half before I felt comfortable moving around and understanding it. Um, it does feel a little bit odd spinning the chair around, but it actually added a really cool version, uh, part of immersion for me. Okay, let's see what else we got. Ah, wireless power. Wireless power shows up at CES every year. Um, and typically it comes up, it shows up at CES and they say, we're gonna go get FCC support and then we never see them again. So let me see if I, um, yeah. So I'm gonna bring up their demo video and kind of show you. Oh, I'll mute that. So wireless power, the concept is that your phones, your remotes, your Xbox controllers, whatever device you have, even you could have lights, um, any electronic in your house that normally takes batteries that's sitting around, this th they would beam power to it so that you never lost batteries anymore. Your remotes would never die, never run out of power. Um, your cell phones would constantly be charging. They wouldn't have to be on Qi chargers. They'd just be on the ground. Again, typically this is done through RF. What the, they have done differently is they're doing it through IR and almost like mini solar panels. So they're targeting the solar panels and shooting beams down to them. What's cool about this is because they're not doing RF, they don't have to worry about FCC and all of those uh, very um, challenging things to get through. And I feel safer because I don't feel like I have to worry about um, cancer uh, because the RF ones will go right through your hands. Uh, this one, if you put your hand out, it'll actually stop the power flow, or I'm sorry, it'll stop the beam. So uh, this is called Y Charge and I'm very excited. I'll be following them. Hopefully these guys pull it off. It's a very hard problem to solve. And also it's a very hard problem to market because you're selling the emitters, but you also need to sell the receivers. Why would I buy a receiver for my phone unless there are emitters all over? Why would I buy an emitter unless there's receivers for all the devices I want? And so it's a chicken and egg, uh, typical tech problem, um, but excited to see it nonetheless. This is a company, um, this is WowCube. And let's see, they they made what they call it basically a handheld game con. 
So Wow Cube has it's almost like a Rubik's Cube in that it moves like a Rubik's Cube, but every cube is a screen. And the screens actually have games on them. So you can see there's a bunch of games. He's going to rotate it around. And he can load a game. You can shake it to get... You shake it basically to, to get the game to go. He's doing 2048 now. I just thought it was a really cool concept for a game console. Now he's seeking funding. He's a bit early. But one of the mind-blowing things for me is the way this was engineered. Each cube has three screens and in, operates independently. He would pull one of the squares off the cube and it would be operating. And when he plugs it back on, it understands where it's plugged in. It communicates to its neighbor cubes and it sends data to them. The other cool thing about it, I thought, was if you just put it down, it can become like an Instagram photo booth or a uh, photo slideshow. And I thought that was cool, like this ambient uh, smart connected screen. And then you pick it up and it becomes this like game console. So this is called Wow Cube. Very, very cool. And yeah, that's all I have for interesting stuff at CES. Let me know what you thought of this video. This is a bit different. I didn't want to do a bunch of editing. I wanted to get you some content because CES is only relevant for a little period of time. Um, I might do a deeper thoughts after a while, but I also have a robots, drones, some cool smart stuff I saw for kids that I want to uh, bring up to you. So thanks a lot for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. And until next time.